good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Wednesday, midweek, December the 7th, 2011. I am DeMartez, your host. I'm also your brother, cousin, uncle, best friend, co-worker, castmate, neighbor, everything wrapped up into one. Thank you for coming to demartez.com to hear today's show. I'm your source for information, inspiration, and laughter. And today on a very cold 35 degree day here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Today's going to be the best day of your life. Something good will happen to you today. Talking about the weather just a little bit tonight. The low is going to be 29 degrees, so um, it's kind of beginning to look a lot like Christmas. On today's show, I'm going to tell you about a man who makes about $55,000 a year selling candy on a subway. Singer Jill Scott and Miguel are upset because they're not nominated for a Grammy. Aww. And a woman shoots her kids and then kills herself because she was denied welfare. Also, Gail King says Wendy Williams is a liar. Now, what's up with that? I'll tell you more about that. And today, I'm doing a segment called What the Heck? And the What the Heck today is Paula Abdul and Nicole Scherzinger received death threats from fans of the show The X Factor. And what the hell is like, hell is short for like, hello or hell. Like, hello? What the heck? So, I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Hope you're having a good week. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, it's Christmas, so I'm really, really excited. And that's the sounds of Donnie Hathaway this Christmas you hear in the back. One of my absolute favorite Christmas songs. So, speaking of Christmas music... If you're in the mood for some good, soulful Christmas music, this Saturday, December the 10th, at 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m., New Venture Theater will present their Soulful Sounds of Christmas musical review. This soulful musical review will take you back as actors perform some of your favorite Christmas songs from Stevie Wonder, The Supremes, Luther Vandross, and of course, The Jackson 5. Tickets are only $12 and can be purchased online at newventuretheater.com or at the door. The location of this great show is the Independence Park Theater on Goodwood Boulevard. Now also this Saturday, here in downtown Baton Rouge, the annual Christmas Parade. Yeah, they're gonna have about 80 decorated floats walking troops, bands, and of course, good old Saint Nick's. Yeah, Santa himself will be there. Now, this parade has been rolling downtown since about 1950, and it's put on by the Cortana Kiwanis. That's an organization right here in Baton Rouge. This parade is the largest and longest running parade in the greater Baton Rouge uh, region. So, um, definitely a big event. Uh, I think I'm going to be at the parade. Definitely want to be there early. Okay, celebrities celebrating their birthday today. Aaron Carter turns 24. Now some of you are like, who is Aaron Carter? Well, Aaron Carter is the brother of Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. Okay, Larry Bird turns 55 today. And on tomorrow, Nicki Minaj celebrates her 27th birthday. And also actress Terry Hatcher will turn 47 on tomorrow. Okay, so what's up with uh, Jill Scott and Miguel upset because they're not nominated for a Grammy? Um, yeah, they're pretty mad. Jill Scott and Miguel took to Twitter to express their disappointments in not being nominated for a Grammy. Miguel tweeted, Damn, this really hurts. Congrats to all the nominees. But I'm effing pissed, yo. I don't think I'm God's gift to music, but I know the album, or at least Sure Thing, should have been nominated. All G, I'll work harder than BET. Jill Scott tweeted, Oh, nominations, I'm speechless. Cover of Billboard magazine, number one CD in the country, tied slash broke the record for urban radio. Okay, so, okay, wow. So see, she's kind of being sarcastic. Now, I must say, I was a little shocked that both of these artists weren't nominated for a Grammy. Both of them had projects that did very well on the Billboard charts, and they got lots of play on radio. But, uh, you know, 
this day and age, stuff like that really doesn't matter. It's all about the commercial appeal, which is sad, the way music is going. So if you ever thought that you couldn't get a job or there's nothing that you can do to make money, that's not an excuse because there's a man in New York that makes $55,000 a year selling candy on a subway. There are people that are up right now that have been up since about 5 a.m. going to work that don't make that kind of money a year. So uh, this is a very interesting amazing story. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. You're in the middle of the DeMartez midweek entertainment news show. Let's get back to some music. Here's Whitney Houston. Do you hear what I hear? Now, honestly, I really wish I heard what I used to hear. You know, when Whitney Houston used to sing like that. Yeah, do you hear what I hear? Whitney, I want to hear that again. But um, I just don't think it's going to happen. Okay, so this man who makes $55,000 a year selling candy on a subway. Yeah, a New York City man named... Alex Trax McFarlane reports that he makes $55,000 a year selling candy. He's 24 and he sells his goods on the subways in New York. He started selling candy on the subway at the age of 11. This guy has 13 years of experience in the candy business. He sells Welsh's fruit snacks, gummy bears, famous Amos chocolate chip cookies, and peanut M&Ms. His biggest sellers are the M&Ms. Now talk about a legal street entrepreneur. McFarlane is able to take care of his family by selling these sweet treats. And it is said that he does so in $300 sneakers. I mean, I could understand that, you know, he, he does a lot of footwork, so he want to make sure his feet are straight. McFarland told British Paper The Daily that he's offering a valued service by helping boost the blood sugar of travelers. Wow, just hope none of them are diabetic because they wouldn't need that type of boost for sure. Are you in the mood for a Whopper? You know, a Whopper from Burger King? It, it's been a while. Well, if you want to treat yourself this Friday, December the 9th, Burger King Whoppers are buy one, get one free. So make a note of that. You can eat that delicious Whopper. Are you a fan of Nene Leakes from the Atlanta Housewife? Well, today Nene is going to be on the CBS show The Talk at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And here's a little side note for you. You know, LSU is going to the BCS championship. Well, two private schools here in the city, Catholic High and St. Joseph Academy, have already declared that on January the 9th, they're going to be closed for the game. And the next day, they're going to open later to make sure that the parents and the students get to enjoy the game. Wow, isn't that amazing? Okay, so this woman kills herself and she shoots her children because she was denied welfare. This is something. You know, this happened in Laredo, Texas, okay? Uh, the children were 10 
and 12, a boy and a girl. Now, all this madness started Monday at 5 p.m. The woman was speaking with two employees when she pulled out a gun and said she wanted to speak to a supervisor. When the supervisor arrived, he convinced her to let the employees go in exchange for keeping him. That was nice. So the woman calls the police and tells them what's going on. The police negotiators then try to convince the woman to stay calm and not hurt anyone. Meanwhile, about 25 other people were moved to safety. The woman finally let the supervisor go around 7.45. Now keep in mind this started at 5. But she stayed inside the office with the children. After hanging up the phone with the police at about 11.45, the police heard three shots and a SWAT team entered the building. Inside they found her body and her two wounded children. The woman's 38 years old. She moved from Ohio to Texas. Okay, so what was she on the phone talking to the police about? She was telling the police about her complaints against the state and federal government agencies. Um, you know, basically because they wouldn't give her welfare and she was really upset the children were very critical and unconscious when taken from the scene their names along with the name of the woman were not released uh by police so that's just you know that's something people I always say this you never know how a person's mind is i mean you just never know you just you know welfare caused this so very, very interesting, sad story there. All right. <laughs> this is funny. Wendy Williams. Now, you know, Wendy Williams is always dragging on everybody. And, you know, she's talking about everybody. Well, recently on her show, Wendy said that she received a letter from Oprah Winfrey. And Oprah was telling her that her and Gail are still friends even though Gail is leaving the OWN network. And Wendy said that Oprah ended the letter by telling her to stay black. Kind of strange, huh, for Oprah? Well, on the Tom Joyner morning show, they were talking about the situation and Gail King called in to tell the truth. And here's what Gail had to say on the show. Gail King is on the line. She is. Gail King. She is on the line. She almost fell off her treadmill listening to you all this morning. Good Jay morning, Anthony Gail. Brown. Good morning, Jay Gail. Jay Anthony How Brown has been yes. drinking a big old glass of haterade. <laughs> that's what. That's his first beverage of the day. Thank you very much, Sybil, for coming to my defense. I couldn't believe you guys. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. Gail, can you set the record straight? Set the record straight, Gail. Oh, I would love to. Number one, the letter that I heard Wendy read, I didn't see it, uh, but I know Oprah never wrote a letter to Wendy. So Wendy's I know lying. Been, no, she never wrote. I, I said, you know, I'm getting, all these, I'm getting all these messages that you wrote a letter to Wendy. She goes, Gail, you more than anybody know that's not true, number one. <laughs> number two, when um, they said, when Wendy was saying uh, that, you know, I think it's going to put a dent in their friendship. When this opportunity was presented to me, and make no mistake, it is an opportunity, the first people I talked to were Oprah, my son, and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know, I don't know. You know, they approached me, I don't know if I should even entertain it. She said, are you kidding? She said, this, this is so what you do. The news is what you love. The news is what you do. You would be crazy to pass it up. She said, don't, Gail, don't be foolish. I said, it's going to open up all the doors about best friend, blah, blah. She goes, I don't care about that. I don't care so see there you have it so wendy williams is a liar wendy you lied gail exposed you so i don't know what that's all about but wendy is insisting that yes oprah did send her a letter okay so today on the show <laughs> this next um topic here is definitely a what the heck topic Paula Abdul and Nicole Zerzinger received death threats by fans of The X Factor. So here's what happened. Seemingly one of America's favorite contestants on the show, Drew, was in the bottom to go home. Drew's fate was in the hands of Paula and Nicole. With tearful eyes and remorse in their voice, both ladies voted to send Drew home. The die-hard Drew fans used Twitter as a way to express themselves. And here's what some of the tweets said. F you, Paula, you dumb beep. You voted off the most talented person on your effing show. I hope you die, you dumb beep. Then someone said, I hope you die, you selfish beep. 
And then they said, Nicole and Paula must die now. Ouch, I mean, over sending someone home, but I guess, you know, they really, really like Drew. You can catch X Factor tonight on Fox, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I love that show. All right, well, that's it for today for the DeMartez Midweek Entertainment News Show. Hope you enjoyed. You can follow me on Twitter at D underscore Martez, or be sure to like my Facebook fan page. That is D dot Martez. Again, I'm your source for information, inspiration, and laughter. I'm going to leave you with another one of my favorite Christmas songs. It's Mary Did You Know, and this comes from the Tyler Perry play, Medea's Christmas, the new one for 2011. I watched it last night. I watched it the other night. It is hilarious. But the girl singing in this song, she is right here from Louisiana. She actually went to school um, at LSU, and she was in LSU's gospel choir. And she has a sister, and her sister also sings. But uh, you're going to get a kick out of this one. This is really good. DeMartez, I'm going to leave you for now. Remember to visit the site each day to stay in the loop. And again, I'm your source for information, inspiration, and laughter. DeMartez, remember, I love you listening. Would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know your baby boy would shake her sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby? Mary, did you know?